Alex Hanser here. It is January 29th in the year 2019. The energy feels strange today. Of course, earlier today, we watched some bizarre behavior in Washington, D.C., and even throughout the whole day, just, you know, the voice of some of the main individuals in that scene echoing in my mind. And being in one of the next towns over on an errand, now it's like a situation where I get in, walk around for maybe one hour, right? Feel the vibes, and then I get out. But what kind of vibes do I feel? And what type of things do I see worshipped? And it's like, wherever I go in America, there I am. <laughs> there I am. And when you want to talk about being red-pilled in the true sense, not the left-right paradigm sense, or a gender warfare sense, uh, limitations within the box of some sort of paradigm, but going deeper into the awareness of how far this world has fallen to the illusions of separation. And of course, picking up on people's anxieties, the anxieties of even many women uh, in, the, in the streets and parking lots uh, in today's world. And then just think about it, the fact that I would be talking about these things during prime years in my youth, while they still do exist, uh, because of the situation that we're in. You know, I'm just pausing there as we let this sink in. And we've been at this point some time. I can remember, at least in my lifetime, even though even before I was born, there was Night of the Living Dead. There certainly was a lot of horror films I didn't see in the 80s. Wow, I was a young child in the 80s. <laughs> but the hardcore obsession with the zombie apocalypse is art imitates life and life imitates art. This is seemingly more of a recent phenomenon. We've also seen various periods in which there's an uptick increase in violence in the streets, maybe a little bit of face eating, maybe a little bit of a political madness thrown in, and maybe a, a hybrid fusion of it all. And we're reaching freaky levels in our society. And when I see certain things that I've been concerned about that I've talked about as far back as three years, I'm going to try to be brief here. I talk about Alex Jones, a, a deeper suspicion about an Alex Jones deception to come, not just the one that's here now. Mentioning specific scenarios, maybe BLM land, and some sort of face-off with Chinese troops that his info warriors that answered the call, something that they won't be set up to win. Almost like a sacrifice. So I don't want to go too far down that road, but when I saw a recent video of him talking about invading Mexico 10 miles in past the border, wiping out the cartel. Also, in the last video, showing you plain audio clips of some of the obnoxious things being said in Portland, Oregon from some of his followers. And this is very different than where he was before. And so imagine also being in my shoes trying to explain this to the average person that's never heard of all these people and try not to sound crazy. <laughs> First of all, you can imagine me as it is. You're watching me. You know, trying to explain this in a rational manner to my own audience. And I've welcomed a lot of you, regardless of some of your views. Because I know that some people, and I don't know everything, but a lot of people haven't been exposed yet to certain voices, out-of-the-box views. They just haven't been exposed to it. We live in a world that likes to cover up certain perspectives. Try to put a cap on it. I don't want to like... You know, um, I'm going to be speaking in code. We talk about that event that led to these wars. That's like a blow to the psyche to be telling people that even having a discussion about something that is so significant, that's also very creepy. It's not like research that went into that event and all the things that surrounded it really went to a buildup of community within the research community, community within the idea. Yeah, it, it's actually something that people think we have a movement. And sure, there's an abstract movement, just like there's a movement of humans moving around everywhere, doing lots of different things, screwing around, making more humans, right? There's a lot of human excitability. <laughs> 
not all movements are of the most mindful. So what kind of movement has been expressing itself on a mindful level, moving us forward throughout the years? Or have we seen the opposite? Have we seen semi-structures of polite dialogue on some levels, right? Evaporate before our very eyes in recent years. You tell me. Now I've done some traveling in recent years. I've had a chance to see Portland. I've had a chance to see Colorado and different parts of Colorado. And here also that some of these areas are having a parallel experience to Portland. People remember uh, affordable housing just 10 years ago, just 15 years ago. Yeah, we'll take a pause from conspiracy in just a moment. But we'll come back and talk about YouTube trying to bury conspiracy theories. What they call conspiracy theories. So we have this issue of affordable housing no longer being a reality. Now think about the conditioning. And yes, yes, there's cause and effect. People move somewhere. Price goes up of rent. And there's a general resentment to a whole group of people. There could be a resentment to Californians from people in Oregon. But I'm also fair and realize they're also in not a great situation. There's a reason why some of them are leaving or decide that they're not going to pay the rent that's expected to live there anymore because it's just not worth it, especially with all the homeless. What are the homeless to blame? Are the immigrants to blame? And see, and there are things on the service level, some of you may say, yes, 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 and yes. But on a deeper systemic level, there's deeper reasons why people are in such movement. It's like musical shares in the world of the have and have nots. There's there's deeper answers and reasons why things are happening. But if someone was to go on autopilot in this world, they go along with the hate, unfortunately. Hate of men, hate of women. There was somebody who was saying, you know, there's no such thing as a good man. And I'm not even responding to comments like that. Just like I don't respond to certain other comments and I stay out of the comment section. But um Briefly, I glanced at one video that's a few years old and talking about good men leaving mainstream society, that, that statement did some triggering for people that don't want to hear that. I want to come around and say there are no good men. Well, there's also men that say there are no good women, and I don't agree with them, but there are brainwashed men and women, women and men, and there's not a lot of people in our world that can eloquently describe the programming as opposed to a conscious man or a conscious woman. There's just not a lot of that going on. Uh, in fact, you have whole YouTube channels that just talk about relationships and sometimes are in that divide. I'm not going to say certain names. Some people put out some good content and then they all, of course, they, they have their own way of describing themselves in my eyes for getting involved in the illusions of separation or making certain assumptions about Western women. I mean, there's a deeper reason why we're seeing uh, the divide, and it's very heartbreaking. I also know that when things start collapsing, because of this divide, a lot of women are going to be suffering. And that's not something that I'm looking forward to hearing about or reading about, but in fact, I already am. And what's really painful is to, it is like dealing with children when you're actually engaging with adult members, so-called adult members of the society, and and. Uh, maybe you've been in my shoes where you feel their fear and you feel their ignorance, maybe even through online exchanges. Maybe you just throw your hands up in the air and go, what's the point at all? So, yeah, some of us have been, and it's limited to say MGTOW, because there's women also that have gone their own way. People that have exited, especially since 2012, something about the post-2012 reality is a bit funky, and that's what it is. There's something going on. There's been something going on. And there is interference within our relationships all the way down to family. It's a very deep subject. I've had a lot of time to muse upon it. Having said that, there, there needs to be more of a spiritual backbone to bring people together, not just being a victim, not, not just being anti-somebody. You know, I learned a powerful lesson last year before someone decided to slander me online. Like, be careful what associations you have with people on the Internet when two or more come together to allegedly expose somebody else in the alternative media. Um, 
you know, if one, at least one of those individuals is not of pure heart or intent, um, open up the door to that type of behavior can boomerang back. You know, like 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 blowback, especially when you are exposing when you I you know it's almost like I'm giving you advice to myself, my younger self. But there's a part of me that feels like it, it could mentor a younger YouTuber, and some things are best left private, right off air. So it could be like you know private info things. Um, I don't uh, look down upon everyone that chooses to be anonymous, but definitely it's respectable when you use your name, and your birth name. I do, but we're also entering into a brave new world where things are changing dramatically and it feels like one puts their life at risk, even if that's not the case. Um, it can certainly seem like it. We're not, we're not in the old West anymore. We're not, we're not in the old world of having some privacy left. Like what, what privacy is there is evaporating. Of course, all in the name of national security, but then you have like, what humans do to humans, government aside and conspiracies aside, what humans are doing to humans. Let's loop this back to the news with YouTube. So, and who's to decide what is a conspiracy theory or not? And this is why it is difficult for those of us, people like, I've been involved in this for 15 years, and I've never been the left-right paradigm or coming from that perspective. When I said 10 years ago, there's something about the Russian influence within the alternative media. So technically, that's conspiracy theory. And I'm early on in asking basic questions. A lot of people still don't realize the validity of that, of someone thinking for themselves as far back as 10 years ago or earlier, especially when RT was just first starting. I saw some signs and I had an experience with an RT reporter that was going to have me on. And it was a wake up call that someone intervened in the arrangement and made sure that Liz Wall, who is no longer with RT, Liz Wall kind of left in her own flamboyant, beautiful woman. I sense a lot of evil around her, but very, ooh, very sensual, very sexy, very sexy. I just want to be relaxed and kind of be myself tonight. It's like, hey, I do recognize extreme beauty in women, but it's when it's used for propaganda that I go, yeah. ooh. Now, I do want to say this about InfoWars. I, I, I want to go back and say, back up one of my statements with some detail as to why I believe what I believe. You could be going, what do you mean, Alex? InfoWars seems like it's setting up white women. They're all about white supremacy, one could say. Well, see, what Alex is serving is something darker, though, Alex Jones. Things are not as they seem. And to a lot of people, no, it's not about supremacy. It's about, you know, da, 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 da. and yeah, look, I was into the guy way back when, when he got started, I've seen the flip flop. I know that he knows better than to do what he's doing now to participate in anti-themism with regards to the Middle East. And whatever type of uh, Z <laughs> agenda, you know, talking about the AI bots, but um, the systems know a lot to promote him. So he has... These white female reporters that are going out into dangerous areas in colleges where they're having their lives threatened. What's more important to Alex Jones? Getting that footage. Right? Um, because there's the issue of the safety of his reporters. There's the issue of a number of different things. And th some things maybe aren't best to do in the name of politics. There's a lot of people in the name of politics. They're getting involved in dangerous situations. They're losing their cool. You got to think about situations where reporters lose their cool, protesters lose their cool, and they're bouncing their energies off of each other. But then there are handlers that are controlling these people that are running these companies or, of course, pulling the strings of Alex Jones. We cannot discount that. And so there's something deeper behind the madness that he's currently expressing. Things are not as they seem. CNN. Why would CNN run with a misleading story? There I am. I just kind of talked through and really felt, you know, I can get emotional watching that footage. It's a different tone where I'm just talking normally, looking at the camera. So let's just kind of keep it on that tone. Um, but I can definitely, f maybe you can feel it too. I, I remember even commenting over Ferguside, uh, Ferguson riots. And me and my friend Bill were shouting at each other over the timing of me talking over the clips. We could have been affected by something being sent through the videos in which those those newscasts showing the Ferguson riots 
How do we know that a signal wasn't sent to cause some of us to riot? Hell, as well, some of us are going to be uh, called conspiracy theorists. Some as well earn the title. <laughs> but there is a light side and a dark side, ladies and gentlemen, um, to conspiracy theory. So, so where does YouTube leave us a creators for change, safe space, especially those of us that that okay, some people may call some of us people like me white. Some people be like, nah, hell no, he ain't pure. Um, so YouTube shouldn't put then people like me who have had to deal with certain levels of crap from today's generation, especially in the last couple of years, more so than my entire time in alternative media. There's no safe space for a, play, a guy like me. They throw me in with the whole, these people are all, look at what they talk about. They don't even leave space for an independent on that topic. Look at Schultz, he's going to run as an independent. He was already uh, He was already trolled by some Democrats saying, you're there to help Trump win. You're a billionaire. Yeah, what are you going to do for us when you're over there talking to your, you know, uh, you know Forbes buddy or uh, uh, Davos? You know, over there at Davos. Yeah, what are you going to do for us? And so, uh, you know, this this guy was booed out. It, it's a legitimate question. I just don't think, like a lot of you, that the mainline Democrats are legitimate either. So YouTube is saying they're going to be bearing conspiracy video content. They are no longer going to be suggesting. At this level, hardly any of my videos get suggested. I want to thank deprogram.net for reposting a recent video of mine. And I think that got about a thousand views. Uh, my life would be a lot easier if more of my videos were hitting at least 500 to 1,000. And it's possible it still could go that way. I've also considered that I don't know. I don't know what some of you would think. I, if I were to make a whole new YouTube channel, I'd have to do a lot of work to build it up. I've considered it because there's also a lot of things that I've discussed on this channel, a lot of buzzwords I'm not going to use in this video, that could potentially have put the whole channel into a quote-unquote conspiracy theory category, which would be more problematic than just individual videos, do you understand, more than just individual videos being flagged and buried. Does a whole channel itself end up kind of flagged and have a rating system to where, you know, because it does like rate the channel, depend on thumbnail and other things. At one point I had a D minus, you know, at one point it went up to a C or a B. Kind of ridiculous. But there is an art to AI and the algorithm. And so certain people that really know what they're doing, new YouTube content creators, it's almost like hitting your 777, but in a rigged game, how exciting is that? Sure, you can go to Vegas and spend some money. You can get on YouTube and spend a lot of time, but how many people are going to get at that level? And you've heard me be critical of people that will deliberately use the system to cater to a certain type of niche, but when that's based in being derogatory or putting people down, you can have your moment in the limelight for a while. There may be a spiritual cost to some of that content if it's disinformation. Okay, so I've been around the block for a number of years and have had to deal with people's insults. Even Chris Green over the years, it's not just political stuff. The guy has really played the Richie Rich type of, I'm holier than thou, I'm better than you. What can you guys do with nothing or no money? You at least got to have some money. You know, that type of Richie Rich talk, it's not just politics. Uh, and it's other things that I'm not getting to, into with regard. So there's a reason why he comes up, because I'm giving you a textbook example. I'm giving you a textbook example. And from the time that I actually first turned mentioning him as one of the worst of the worst, he's gone from 400-something subscribers to 600-something. So it is relevant in the sense that you can pull out a little measuring stick and see people literally with trajectories like that that somehow or another – you know, it's almost as if, and this is pure speculation, just so you know that, it's almost as if he and certain others, like, they got a script, and they were told, like, you know, they were helped with information with regards to what topics to cover. I think there's other people that are shaking in their boots with regards to the fallout from the Roger Stone thing, but the Roger Stone thing ultimately is a show. And you have all of this emotion, and it's what they're not showing you. It's like a movie. It's like a movie script. You know, and, and one should get really suspicious anyways when people start dropping names like House of Cards and other TV shows, Netflix, 
where, you know, it, it sure seemed to be a whole lot like normal reality or regular politics. When people start obsessing on certain things. Hey, do you hear about the show on Netflix? No, I haven't. What is it? House of Cards or maybe a show on mainstream TV. And then there's a buzz around it. Now, on the topic of creating a buzz around it, I remember back in the day, early days of social media, all this buzz about Jesse Ventura. You know, uh, there could be a little bit of excitement, kind of like a kid in the comic books going, wow, this guy that I used to watch on wrestling is going to talk about conspiracy theory. So I am old enough, even though I have a youngish face, I'll be 40 in, in a few years, but I was in my early 20s when I started looking at this stuff, and I remember... Again, I was talking about going to gun shows, not for guns, never bought a gun at the gun show, bought nuts and other self-defense items. Uh, this is a spring baton. You know, these were always fun to uh, take a look at, especially when it was all new to me. Uh, and then to kind of be able to judge and gauge the quality of the, oh, those are the mass produced shit knives. Those are nice ones. Then there was the books, the self-defense books, and then the quote unquote, anti-government um i was definitely alarmed at some of these gun shows but you know by the large amount of nazi uh swastika memorabilia that i saw people sell but uh, i was also very excited um to learn about this is in the early days uh various conspiracies so there's always been this allure about certain things almost being on the verge of being censored and the idea of the government trying to censor it and that somehow making it more popular than the phrase, don't steal this book. So thinking about the rise of Alex Jones and reminding you of something that another YouTuber who for some reason is now under attack, although his channel is growing quite a bit as well, while he's under attack. So sometimes uh, the unintended consequences is for someone to blow up in size when they're being attacked because of something that they're sharing. He was highlighting uh, Alex Jones in his own words, as I coin it. And one of the things, I'm going to try to stay focused on this, that he was talking about, that Alex Jones was alleging, he was alleging that members of the shadow government told him in recent years that they helped him behind the scenes by acting like they were trying to censor his videotapes. But in the end, the videotapes um, did really well. And through this type of reverse psychology, also, you got to think about the police putting out, uh, you know, that type of bulletin, warning about Ron Paul supporters, warning about the, the film Freedom to Fascism, warning about Alex Jones, warning about libertarian ideal, ideals and ideas. And then we really saw things blow up with interest regarding Ron Paul, libertarian uh, ideas, things of that nature, with really a peak out, I'd say. In the 2012 period, I still remember being in Dallas, Texas, uh, specifically right outside of Dallas in Plano, in a very nice living room uh, with very fine wine being served and cheese. It was the Ron Paul debate viewing party. And for a very short, I'm not trying to do Kung Fu Ninja moves, but it's like for a very short hoi, period in time, there was a sense of community between myself and other Americans. It was the Ron Paul campaign of 2012. And I even ran around. That video may still be on. To type in Alex Ansari, Megaphones, Dallas, Texas, Ron Paul. It may still be public. <laughs> it may still be public. I drove around, filmed, and megaphoned, and was almost feeling a religious zeal. Perhaps some of that was rubbing off. Also check out, an, was it Oak Cliff in Dallas? Where I filmed a Ron Paul I think there must be 6,000 views, uh, and I think I had some decent music behind it. Regina, others, they were later very, they were unhappy with the fact that I was questioning whether Ron Paul was in it to win it. But I did reach that conclusion. I had a deep epiphany before the election, like kind of like my own quickening, and some people didn't like it. And I didn't like the fact that they didn't like it. Because I was being emotional, intellectually honest with um, the questions that I was asking. But the idea of community in late 2011, while the Occupy Dallas thing was doing their thing, I remember, uh, I won't say her last name, her name was Paula. I never asked Paula out, 
she gave me kind of a hint that she wanted to be asked out, but she was going out with another guy then. I remember talking to her briefly about my idea for a documentary film about China, the China threat. I'm being kind of taken aback by the fact that she said, oh, that's very interesting. And um, maybe a little back and forth briefly on Facebook. And a couple other memories. Um, uh, people comment here and there that have known me in the past. So that was an interesting time for me. Leaving Portland, by the way, for the first time, as far as moving out. Going into Dallas during this time of Occupy. I'm going to connect a few dots here. And this was right before 2012, 2013, as we go through the solar maximum. So as the energy was starting to amp up, Occupy was active and I was moving. As the energy and solar activity was more active, by the way, it was back in 2011 that we saw initially that article saying that Magnetic North is moving an average of 40 miles per year towards Siberia. So I, I think it is in our favor for us to be able to connect the dots between these uh, gotshot moments. By the way, there is someone saying that the, the rings of Saturn somehow are disintegrating. For years, we've heard from David Icke and others talk about Saturn and the Archons. Are these two connected? But I told him in the last video, for me to start calling the world conscious and waking up, I have certain prerequisites. I have certain demands, if you will. No, seriously, before society gets kudos from Alex Hansery, certain things need to be met. We need to see a return to some level of romance between man and woman. Even if we are unsuccessful at ending the wars, there should at least be the emotional and intellectual honesty to the what is. doesn't mean you have to be superwoman or super mama or super daddy or superman, nor I, right? But should we be honest about the situation that we are in, not living a lie, not hanging out with thugs on the left or the right that are shouting obscenities to a crowd across the street, screaming about how holier than thou they are. And, and that's what's troubling. I'm not going to say names, you know, but I went into a viewing like literally watch fest where it's like, oh my God, watching all of those different things happening in Portland and all those players and how disgusting it is. How certain people use uh, even their own sexuality as women to get the men together. And, oh, yeah, you're going to do something for America. Aren't you heroes? Well, let's see where you are in five years. Let's see where you were five years ago. I'm sorry, what? Where were you five years ago? You got to be suspicious of the Johnny and the Lisa come latelys that, that are active during certain periods in the timeline, and then they're nowhere to be seen. And sometimes people are there to cause a ruckus. Right, to cause to, to cause some noise to alienate certain people from coming down. Remember when I was doing the meetups? The meetup said it's a beautiful pizza. It was okay pizza. It was a decent deal. Remember when I was doing the meetups in in Portland, Oregon, and there was a her name was Carrie. She was beautiful. She she brought her sisters down. I want to see the one and only Alex answer in person, not just through the the television screen through cable TV. There's a little bit of, you know, this is before YouTube got so big. So the idea of someone saying something outside the mainstream media, right before all these YouTubers, right? You know what I'm talking about. So 10 years ago, people came across someone that dedicated their life to speaking that truth. It wasn't like this threatening thing. They were like, wow, they're a little curious. Now it's like they're afraid we're all freaks, right? Wingers and worse and worse. I got a box stand to where if we want to talk about mindful relationships, they'll give us that M title, misogyny. And it's really unfortunate. I don't hate men, but do I talk about unconscious male behavior in today's society, video game addicted behavior? You tell me. You know what the answer is if you're a regular. If you're a regular, you know exactly what the answer is. So why then should there be some sort of cover up? from me to you to cover up and then just make it about all the men. No, it's it's very much about the men with the women's shoes as well. And that's never going to change. See, so they're basic physics, right? People coming together, no pun intended. I really need a soundboard to hit those sound effects. You have the people coming together and creating life. 
and creating thought forms and, and, and showing examples to that child. Monkey, human, see, monkey, human, see, do. Monkey, see, monkey, do. You know, and so a lot of people are not exposed to concepts about empathy, compassion. It doesn't mean that there aren't certain situations where there are good parents, right? That sometimes just end up with a rotten child because let's be frank, right? Maybe we should be questioning how many souls versus non-souls um, might be born in the post 2012 reality. If so much is inverted in our world, what if the opposite of the crystal children and indigo children prophecy is the truth? More like children of the corn. Like I'm still waiting. <laughs> I'm, I'm still waiting. I want to say that that is a great way to externalize on the next generation. Let them deal with it. That's like the Christians that say, you know what? Hey, you know what? We shouldn't resist this takeover. Yeah, let you, Jesus is coming. These are all signs then of Jesus' return. Let's just celebrate. Let's celebrate. Oh my God, this is so great. Jesus is almost here. All the signs. And then like so many people do that. It's like, dude, what the hell? You have Muslims that do it. You have others that do it. You have New Agers that do it. I've talked to you in the past about parallels between elements, the controlled New Age, which isn't true spirituality. True spirituality that isn't orthodox isn't New Age. That's old school, original, ancient teachings, baby. See, a lot of people, though, that are stuck in their orthodox mindset don't understand that. Nor do some of them uh, understand the idea that some of us are not claiming to be gods or any of that other doctrine stuff. And I keep coming across these YouTube videos that are brainwashing people. There are these YouTube videos out there that are made by orthodox nutcases that are saying, yeah, yeah, any of these belief systems that are outside of ours are Luciferian doctrines just because they say so. All these people secretly listen to this Alice lady just because they say so. It's like reality is not the way that some people on YouTube with 100,000 views for some reason or a million views say that it is. And isn't that funny that, that the flat earthers and the black Israelites screaming on the street have something in common? Screaming at people that are looking a little deeper at the sun? And that is something that's coming back. And that is an attack on the spirit of the soul. Those that would look spiritually at this thing called the sun. I don't recall in this in the, in the 80s or early 90s anyone proposing to me through a radio show or any other means a deeper connection spiritually between us and the sun. It's something that pulled me in. A couple years into the alternative media activism, it would be 2009, I'm just being brief here, that would, that would write that first article on Nexus where I looked at a number of different studies and then it was published on Nexus without me even sending it to them. And then it would be a few years later that I wrote down the ebook while living in isolation in Costilla County without the internet. All my information was like literally downloaded from someone's house 10 miles away, also off the grid. And I also see myself writing a book and or ebook, definitely expanding on the solar flares, but also writing something about my life so that you understand how I came to some of my levels of awareness through the direct experiences. We're talking about direct experiences or perception of a direct experience with the true creator that comes from certain things. It could be uh, something like surviving a car wreck, which I've gone through more than once. And things that seemed too synchronistic, almost as if the universe was saying us a direct beeline sign. Now, I, I, I talk sometimes really quickly through some certain stories, but in a recent video, I talked to you about having two, not one, but two dreams, which never happened at all at any time, that were in like Vishnu within the uh, pantheon of uh, Hindu gods. It's the maintainer. It's the main one, but it's the maintainer between Shiva and Brahma. So creation, destruction, and the maintenance between the two. And then this is a very kind of deep understanding because within this, you can also find where the archons fit in and the archangels or guardian angels or divas, as they're called. I'll, I'll grab the book on mythology and we'll go through that, that specific section. But something tells me that it's relevant for those of you that follow my content that have already been hearing about the archons that have already been exposed to the idea of us in some cases being trapped in this world. And I've organically somehow have been fusing my own life experiences and perhaps there's been something within my own DNA database that's been 
assisting me in making sense out of this world. And now that I look at these books a little deeper at elements of mythology that I've never officially looked at before this year, something inside me seems to be remembering. I recounted to you a month ago something that happened in 2007. It wasn't a lot of times I took shrooms in the city, but in, in that time on Powell Butte, uh, that was in that time when I was staying with Patricia, uh, in, right off 181st and Powell, but over at Powell Butte, it seemed like Shiva was breathing, or the mountain was breathing, and seemed to breathe Shiva, and it seemed to be angry. And she was known to be kind of an, an angry earth spirit, and it, it, it's connected to the underworld, but it's connected with the pantheon of the of the gods, which is all really kind of united in the oneness, or one energy, perhaps. There's more than one ways to look at it. I know that within this world, I have a photographic memory. I have been exposed to more ethnocentric attitudes about every other culture from arrogant people of the society, constantly. Even people mocking me when I was a kid for enjoying Chinese food. Oh no, McDonald's wasn't my favorite food, although I'd eat McDonald's, still do. For a while, I took a lot of time off. Yeah, you, you end up living in poverty for a little bit. You find yourself a little bit less picky. I'm not really concerned about vegans online in the comment section judging me. That's a funny one. And for years, for years, I fell for it. And that's pretty sad. People that use comment sections to judge uh, the eating of others, the health of others, um, the actions of others, things of that nature. Um, we have amazing technological apparatus that can help us organize. But are we the ones that are organizing? Or is there way more room for growth? Or is there more or less us sitting back and watching the illegal ATV riders have their party or the right wingers having their party or the anti fas having their orgy. Eh, I bet that's some orgy. I literally would walk by certain buildings where a lot of punks would be hanging out, acting really suspicious, going in and out. Well, I wonder whether they're having one big s and uh, bondage fest, one big party for the liberated humans. But uh, <coughs> the, the, the important thing to understand within Portland is that my birth did occur there, and it would be in Portland that I would come to a lot of my early ideas. And there would come a time, though, to prevent myself from spoiling or self-destructing or cycle repeating itself uh, to, to prevent a certain level of, because that's how, even though I didn't really know the word Archon yet, it wouldn't be tell Dallas, Texas, and coming across uh, Laura Eisenhower, not a big fan of her now, but she was kind of instrumental at that moment, and saying the trigger word that got me looking. Oh, trigger word. Alex, the trigger word. What does he mean? It got me looking like soul memory. Archon. I know this word. Oh, I, I've exposed these mofos before. It's like a lot of things started making sense. And then my memory started going back. And this is best suited for a book or an autobiography. Literally of what seemed to be a massive. Have I told you this recently? <laughs> Okay, so you heard a video recently where a guy shared his vision. Well, he has a meditation class that he teaches online. He doesn't talk about China online. Like, <laughs> he's, he's actually worked to distance himself even from me. <laughs> yeah, he's, he has his own life. And it's all meditation, ground yourself. It is not talking about that stuff. He just did that with me and for the audience because that is something that he saw as young as 10. Well, he sees other things. And I don't mean like, like in spirit. After I had him on a couple times, he offered to do some clearing work on me. And he saw he saw mothership level intensity interference with whatever I was trying to create for myself and the Portland community when I started that store. Because I wanted to, to see people come together over something positive. And perhaps it wasn't meant to happen, but there was a lot of energy interference. And there was a lot of... Uh, one of the business partners, see, I didn't invest major money. I was basically, I ended up, unfortunately, being the pawn of two older men. More on the right-wing side, they were, they were also involved with Ramtha and James Gilliland. No, I'm not here to invoke Beetlejuice or, or strange arconic energies that clearly work through those two mentioned individuals. These guys, Richard from Survival Center and a guy that went by the name of Michael Knight, who directed a documentary called Contact Has Begun, 
which basically played up a lot of the claims by James Gilland and the going-ons up there. When you begin to see a network of straight deceiver-deceiver, I think some of you are already catching on. Like, wow, they all kind of have like an inner click. James Gillen also is pretty big in promoting Trump even to this day. So he's having like, you know, uh, Destroy the Illusion or various other artificial YouTube channels that seem really fake. And I, I've gone up there and I've had interactions with these people and I've come across a cold demeanor. I remember one time I've even seen William Henry standing next to James Gillen. They're both kind of looking at me like, no, that guy is not our friend. It was very, very... So I just want to tell, especially a lot of you older women that have been listening to some of these guys for years and years, but you don't really know if there's a story behind the story, things are not as they seem. Some people are also womanizers. This has also come out about people like Adam Kokesh. I'm not here to do a bash fest. I'm here to say that in the totality of my lifetime, meeting different people, interviewing certain people, getting a feel for their energy, also hearing certain things, traveling to certain people. I mentioned going to James Gillen in the past, past videos, many times up to his ranch. Never really gave him much money. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe it was just into money. And I was maybe a little bit once in a while for parking. But I never really felt the big need to like pay to like, you know, sleep in my vehicle and look up at the stars. I figured maybe that was it. Alex, you should be paying more when you come up here. Maybe that was it. But overall, it was something else. It was the energies that were up there. It's the claims. And it's others that, that purport such theories and other things that go along with that. And I'm not here to attack you if you're into certain things, so maybe I just won't mention it. But there are certain theories, including Planet X. There are certain people that are that are not to be trusted. Uh, common Elanine, uh, they get on certain bandwagons. There's another guy I interviewed him 10 years ago, and he was making bot predictions about things that he said were going to happen then. Now he's super popular with the Bitcoin crowd. And other people, I interviewed that guy like three, four, five times when I had a radio show on daily. And all those predictions fell on their face. What I'm trying to say is, guys, even though I'm young, I have, like, deep history in this movement. Most of these guys know who I am and would roll their eyes if they were exposed to my name. And I think that's very, very sad. And I think you should know that. When you hear me go off, you, you need to understand that I can also come back in a calm demeanor and look you in the eye and say, I don't know what it is about a lot of these individuals, whether some of them may have been susceptible to mind control. Uh, the, I mean, you could definitely end up targeted by being a speaker and have your mind fried, basically, turned inside out. But ultimately, a lot of people are asking why the, the Trump worship stuff is so strong. And it seems like there was a subliminal that went out. I made a video saying, are some white Americans becoming targeted individuals? And it wasn't getting into the same level of targeted individualism commentary that you hear from others. It was taking it to a level of, can someone then be targeted with that same type of weaponry? to become a fascist or an extremist. That's a level some of you aren't ready to deal with. Some of you are not going to go in that direction that may identify as being targeted. Some, they will. Have very questionable people that claim that they're targeted over the years. And I'm not talking about anybody specific. Um, contacted me and wanted to come right over. And something really weird was, and a number of different women, don't be offended. And see, the thing is, that's what annoys me is when I come to you and I tell you what's up, when people get offended. There are married women that sent very inappropriate emails inviting adultery, and I saw that as a setup. And so there's ways that seem things that we could see within our world. It's like, let's talk about sexuality. So out of the sexual suppression, which really is there, people develop kinks. Now, there's going to be certain things that people are into because we're humans, but some things go too far. I mean, who the hell added electrical items in with what they were doing 1,000 years ago or 2,000 years ago? Uh, and the way that people mix in technology with it, and on one level, people prefer it because the kind of do-it-yourself mechanism, that's a clean way of saying it, and technology, it's a uh, it's a society and it's a world where a lot of people are programmed to be angry with others that show a certain level of healthy interest. And it goes deeper. Let's go deeper than sex toys. So technology puts out all this race baiting negativity that many, many years ago, 
sure, there's been elements of racism, but it wasn't overdrive in some cases. Right now, as you know, they can custom tailor things to appear a certain way through the internet and social media. Certain types of tensions between bloodlines and people can be amplified by people that know what they're doing. And the humans on the ground haven't shown me that they understand divide and conquer and how Facebook can be instrumental in that. And so whether we're talking about politics, whether we're talking about sexuality, whether we're talking about other things, um, it's down to a science. And so the world is suffering. We collectively are suffering. That's why you have suicides. That's why you have these things taking place. And it seems that every video that I do where I just get real with you, just get real with it, is a video that's demonetized. And yet I'm watching this unfold slowly as a real small YouTube creator. Here I'm hearing people that are 100,000 subscribers or 60,000 subscribers, they're called small content creators. Well, what am I at 16,000? The ego has to be overcome, but we are still human. This cannot be denied that this is a very frustrating experience to feel limited within my reach of the social media spectrum. And I don't want that to limit you because that's the Orwellian mind control. That's what we need to work to overcome, that sense of limitation. You know, we've got to imagine ourselves a deeper level of freedom. I've been trying to imagine a deeper level of freedom myself, freedom from all of the PTSD and the mind control and the defensiveness and the sense of needing to even wake somebody up to anything at all or heal anyone or anything other than myself. There really has been so much of myself that I've been giving to you. Those that enjoy my content, those that hate my content. I don't really feel a lot of hate right now, right? So I appreciate you guys for being there, but I am here to let you know that I still remember and have gone through a lot of crap in recent years and throughout most of my life. And there's going to be certain periods, plus we're coming out of the full moon, to where it all seems to be climaxy. And it's not a bad thing to be aware. And sometimes within the depression, there could be the breakthrough or, or that sense of deep pondering. And what are we grieving? Because that's what this is. We're grieving. There may be some hope, I understand, and I understand some people are hopeful about certain things, but there, there's an element of us that's grieving a normal, healthy way of life. When there's healthy communication, and it's not just based on the internet. Um, some of us, I guess, are lucky enough to have memories, some positive childhood memories. I have a lot of turbulent, traumatic childhood memories, but I also have some positive memories, as I've said before, of storytelling. People that were like family that told me interesting stories, more interesting than my own family itself. The creativity and, and, and feeling like I could see the world through their eyes as my friend, the A-man, would talk to me over Chinese food in Portland. And he would talk about Portland and it being like something out of Sin City, the graphic novel, something out of Hunter, the TV show, um, although he wasn't a cop <laughs> or law enforcement. He was in a, he was living in the wild west of old Portland. Enough said. <laughs> and it's like, wow, this stuff could be a movie <laughs> with Synthwave. Um, and it is interesting to see how Synthwave is going mainstream. There's also, as I say, that there's like the dark side and the light side of things. I can listen to the type of Synthwave that Infowars is playing. That's like some hypnotic subliminal like <laughs> type of stuff as opposed to something that up, uplifts you. The other thing that's kind of weird is it being called 80s when it has an 80s theme to it, but technically it wasn't actually made in the 80s. It has an 80s theme to it because it's synthesizer and it's certain tones that may activate certain energy centers. So as you're hearing this synthwave music, type in the best of synthwave, some of it's crap. Some of it kind of gets the mind going. I have a pair of headphones right here. So many hours... Many hours out of the morning, I have my own music therapy where I just sit in this chair and I just listen to music or I may read a little bit. But right now, right now is the winter and right now leading into March and even April it can be a very difficult time psychologically for those of us humanoids that live in the region of the four corners of North America. Um, around me, as I've told you before, is a lot of, it's not urban blight, it's off-grid blight. 
a lot of extreme poverty. Got to think about the people that are living off grid for other reasons other than the natural get close to nature reasons. Um, sometimes I'll open up my door and I'll hear someone scream. There was an attempted murder within um, half a mile to a mile of where I currently reside. And yet an unarmed man like myself has to continue the spiritual path to literally, and I want to find a conclusion here, let go and let God. But on a deeper level, you know, just kind of realizing that I've really busted my hump for 14 or 15 years. It, it really troubles me to see some of my predictions come closer to a potential reality. As mentioned earlier, InfoWars Mexico, talking about a Mexico standoff. Sounds a lot like Alex answers predictions. I don't want that. But the greater reality is I'm going to have to emotionally face the fact that a lot of things that I have predicted or some things that I believe are on the horizon that you don't know about specifically, but that I may personally fear, we all have to go through this and bravely walk into the future. We have to understand, and this is something that came to me strongly, and I, I don't want to end on a note of awareness. We don't want to offer ourselves in this world. We also don't want to be afraid of the world beyond this one. We don't want to, we don't want to hold on to and start adapting to, at this point, really strong, dominant, holding on to this. It's like everything that they're trying to get us to focus on is the opposite of what we should be focused on. Yeah, someone could be arguing for the board, the wall and the border in favor of security, but what about security of the soul and going deeper and being as passionate about one's spirituality, if they truly believed in such, as they are about their physical security? Not that that wall is actually going to make them secure. The, the treason is within. They can't see that. If they really could see that the treason was within, they would ask, hey, they want to just be trying to maybe build a wall and some cameras to keep some of us in uh, while one day they hunt our daughters. They're, they're not at the level of intellectualism, apparently. We're living in idiocracy. So understand, in a world like that, in a world where we're even seeing the evil of many women, the things that women will do to women, which is, which is heartbreaking. You know, I saw a meter maid today. Instead of looking at her with anger, I looked at her with sympathy. But I didn't directly look at her. But I, I was reading her thoughts. I was reading her energy field. And she was doing the act of having to, and she didn't want to, but she's a slave. She's a pretty slave. She's a slave nonetheless. But she has to write down that ticket. Do we have to hate her for it? Where's the compassion for the slave who doesn't know any better? How can we work to try to help some of these slaves? So that's all I'm going to say for now. I want to thank you for watching. If you want to become a monthly supporter, please check out Patreon. It's an easy way to do it. If you want to donate at any time, even going around the internet, rarely happens that somebody offers to do a money gram or uh, Western Union. But it does happen sometimes. That option is there as well. I am in the state of Colorado. Until next time, I'm Alex Hanser reminding you, the path to the ultimate truth and place of power still lies within.